Hello, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, whatever time it is that you are watching this video. Um, this is the uh, continuation of our discussion regarding the uh, different learning objectives given to us by Benjamin Bloom and his associates. So let us go back to what we have um, discussed so far as our review. In the previous video, we learned that learning is divided into three areas or domains. The cognitive domain, the affective domain, and the psychomotor domain. And for its domain, Benjamin Bloom and his associates gave us a specific set of educational objectives. Um, each of these domains is divided into uh, levels or categories. So, for example, the cognitive domain is divided into six categories the affective domain as we will see and learn shortly um, as you can see on the slide actually is divided into five categories and lastly psychomotor is divided into seven categories for its category in its domain they gave us a set of specific uh, behavioral terms. These are words, particularly verbs, that we can use in writing our uh, objectives. So, so far we have already talked about the cognitive domain, which is all about, uh, about, um, about knowledge. So the first level under this is knowledge, followed by comprehension, then application, then analysis, then synthesis, then evaluation. That was the original taxonomy or framework um, created by Bloom and his associates in 1956. In 2001, this taxonomy, the terminologies at least, were revised. So knowledge became remembering, comprehension became understanding, application became applying, analysis became analyzing, uh, synthesis is no longer included in the taxonomy, evaluation went down one step lower, one notch lower and was changed to evaluating and then creating the highest level was added. So the shift is from nouns to verbs, from product to process. So those are the categories in cognitive domain, in the cognitive domain. As so already mentioned, the um, Affective and psychomotor domain are also uh, divided into subcategories, as you can see on the slide. So the affective domain, which refers to the area of valuing, attitude, and appreciation, includes the following categories. First is receiving, the lowest level. Next is responding, then valuing, then organization, and the last is characterization, the highest level. So if the cognitive domain refers to the acquisition of knowledge, the acquisition of the acquisition of information, it's it's um, it's all about information, it's all about knowledge, uh, and how we, how, we, how we process such information and knowledge. 
And then how we create something new out of that knowledge. Yun lahat sa cognitive domain. Dito naman sa affective domain, this is all about emotions, this is all about feelings, this is about attitudes and appreciations. Because we also learn these things. No? We learn how to value something, we learn a specific kind of attitude, and we learn how, we learn how to appreciate uh, things. Such learning is called affective learning. And that area of learning is called the affective domain. Just like the cognitive domain, it, it is also divided into categories or levels. So, uh, we do not learn a particular value um, right away. No? We, we do not learn, say for example, honesty. We do not become honest in an instant. We, we do not learn honesty in an instant. So, sabi ng teacher sa kanyang objective, at the end of the 60-minute period, the students should become honest. <laughs> Nobody becomes honest in one hour. So, it, it, will, be a, it will be a slow process. Or, uh, pwedeng dati ng honesty yung bata, but he has no concept of honesty. He does not understand honesty. Although, oh, although, no. Oh, Ginagawa na niya. He does not steal. He, he returns things that are, that are not his. He does, he does not uh, cheat during examinations. Things like those. But he does not have a concept of honesty. Hindi niya alam na yung mga bagay na yun, you put them all together and tawag ay honesty. So, in learning, in, in learning honesty, particularly the character, the value of honesty, we go through different stages. We receive, we respond, we value, we organize, and then it becomes part of our character in the end. Iyan ang mga pag-uusapan natin ngayon. That's called affective domain. So what we do is first um, call attention to a particular value that's receiving. Yeah. Identifying and articulating learning objectives under the affective domain. So the first is receiving. This refers to a learner's willingness to pay attention to particular events, stimuli, or classroom activities. Paying attention to something is already a very good indication that he wants to learn it receiving, uh, showing willingness to pay attention to particular event. So, ano ang gagawin dito sa, sa classroom? Ano ang gagawin ng teacher? Listen to others with respect. So he will provide uh, learning activities that will give opportunities for the learners to uh, listen to others with respect. They can dramatize a uh, conversation uh, and then show how they, in the dramatization, show how they show respect to, to others. Uh, how they listen to others with respect. A good example is listen for and remember the name of newly introduced persons or people. That is one mm, way of uh, teaching the receiving level. We, we, emphasize, we emphasize to them that paying attention is a sign of, of, of respect. It, and, it's already, and it's already a very good step towards learning a particular value. Yun ang umpisa. So they pay attention to a specific value. Uh, sa mga bata ito, no, usually, keywords include, okay, ito yung mga, ano nga ulit ang tawag natin, sa, dun sa mga words or verbs that we use in writing our educational objectives. Correct, naalala din. We call them, behavioral terms. So the behavioral terms that we can use under the receiving level are the following. Ask, choose, describe, follow, give, hold, and so on and so forth. You can all read them on the slide. And then, wag naman puro paying attention lang. They should learn how to respond or react to the value that they have seen. Nakita, nakakita na sila ng instances of honesty. 
Halimbawa, the teacher presented a story where a child returned a wallet to, 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 to a man who, who dropped it. Then mahaba yung kwento, isa lang yun sa part. Oh, the teacher can call attention to that part. Sino ang mga bata? Sino ang gumawa na niyan? Binalik yung wallet sa mama. Ma'am, ako po. Yung iba naman, ako din. Bakit kailangan gawin yun mga bata? Ma'am kasi po, or sir, kasi po, hindi po yun sa atin. And uh, my mama, nanay ko po, taught me that we should not keep things that are not ours. We should return them to the rightful owner. So they pay attention, no? They pay attention and they notice instances of the value that the teacher is trying to teach. Yan ang nasa level ng receiving. Uh, do not require them to be honest right away. We, we go through the process. We show them instances of honesty and we uh, see, we try to see whether they can notice it, whether they can pinpoint instances of honesty. And kapag na-notice on it, that's the time we let them respond. And in this level, there should be active participation on the part of the students. Nakita na nila ngayon yung instances of honesty. Ano ang gagawin nila? They will, part, they will participate and um, well, answer questions about about it no bakit kailangan gawin bakit magandang gawin yung ibalik yung hindi atin sinong may sabi sa iyo na <laughs> dapat gawin things like those so they can respond ma'am kasi sabi ni nanay maganda daw yun kasi hindi atin yun sa kanila yun oh see they're already responding at saka maganda mam yung honest para pag tayo naman mam ang nawala ng wallet iba ibibigay din sa atin so you see you, they have already seen instances of honesty they have already received it meaning they have paid attention to it they are now aware of it and in this level they are already beginning to respond to it they are already beginning to show interest to show the desire to have that particular value of honesty they can now see the goodness in being honest the benefits of being honest. Why we should be honest. So, nagre-respond na sila. So, uh, sa, sa, sa objectives na ito, we can use the following uh, um, behavioral terms. Discuss. Halimbawa, uh, discuss, the, discuss the merits of being honest. Ano bang mapapala ng isang tao kung siya ay honest yan? Kapag na-discuss yan ng mga bata, that is already an indication that they are desirous to have that particular value. So, answer, assist, aid, comply. Uh, depende yan sa inyong lesson, no? Depende yan sa inyong lesson which um, behavioral term you are going to use. So, Anyway, you are already familiar with the process now based from our discussion of uh, the cognitive domain. Bawat level dyan, mayroong, uh, each level has its own set of behavioral terms. All we need to do now is to choose the appropriate um, behavioral term that will express the exact objective that we want. Depending on what level we want our learners to be in? Ano ex what is it exactly that we want them to be able to do at the end of the lesson? So that will tell us kung saan level. Kung nasa receiving pa lang tayo, then we choose uh, behavioral terms belonging to that level. And then we prepare materials belonging to that level. We prepare activities and exercises and experiences, learning experiences that belong to that level. And then we prepare assessment 
that belongs to that level para lahat ay magmamatch, lahat ay aligned. Everything will be consistent or congruent with everything else from beginning to end. So kapag nasa level na ng valuing, you focus on that level. Everything we do inside the classroom will fall on that. Mag-umpisa sa oh, learning objective. So, na-receive na niya, nakita na niyong instances of honesty, tapos na siyang makapag-respond, he is now ready to see the value, to see and internalize the value uh, of a certain phenomena, a certain object, kasi yung, yung, yung pag-value, hindi lang yan puros honesty or bravery or whatever. We also learn how, how to value, uh, say, behavior. Being polite, being punctual, being industrious, being judicious. We can even value objects. The value of money, the value of trees. Yan. Hindi pwedeng putol lang putol lang kahoy. Sabi ng mga bata, bakit sa Doon mag-umpisa yung inyong discussion about the value of trees. So valuing is attaching a sense of importance uh, to a certain phenomena, an object, or behavior. That level is called valuing. The value of a thing is the worth we give it. The value we attach to a particular object, phenomenon, or behavior. Okay. Examples of this are demonstrating belief in the democratic process. See? Demonstrating belief in the democratic process. We value a process. What process? The democratic process. Meaning we consider it important. We want to have it in our country. See? That's valuing, giving importance or value or giving a high uh, premium to something. In our example, it's democracy. We give it worth. Yeah. So that's valuing. Gusto natin siyang gawin. Gusto natin magkamo, magkameron tayo. Gusto natin maging honest. We value honesty. Gusto natin maging patriotic, then we value patriotism. We consider it important. We consider it a desirable value. It's a good thing to have it. Yun, bina, bina value natin sila. So, demonstrate belief in the democratic process. Paano itong gagawin ng mga bata? They can enumerate the, they can enumerate and discuss the merits of democracy. Why is it better than other forms of government? If they can do that, then that will be a demonstration, that will be an illustration of their belief in the democratic process, how they value the democratic process. So, magpe-prepare ka ulit ng mga lessons, activities, exercises, and assessment, all belonging to that level. All belonging to that level. So, ang mga, ang mga objectives mo doon will have the following or can have the following behavioral terms. Complete, demonstrate, differentiate, explain, follow, form, initiate, invite, and so on and so forth. At pipili ka dyan kung anong babagay sa lesson. Halimbawa, uh, you are, you, uh, in, in, your, in your lesson, your um, objective is for the children to demonstrate uh, or show the importance of trees. Show the importance of trees. Saan papatak yun? Nasa valuing pa ba? Or sa responding pa lang? Sa responding pa lang kasi pinapakita pa lang nila yung importance. Pag sa valuing na, 
demonstrate ah uh, demonstrate hmm, the importance no, demonstrate the importance or show the importance or explain or discuss the importance of trees in our environment or in the ecology or demonstrate love of trees demonstrate love of the environment show love of the environment so dito magkikita natin that they really love that they really value the trees the, the environment as a whole the entire ecology so yung pag-explain is a demonstration of valuing if we can explain the importance of trees why we love trees then it is a demonstration of how much we value trees so nasa valuing na tayo so lahat ng gagawin inside the classroom uh, topic materials teaching aids visual aids lahat ng classing aids assessment ay tungkol doon para lahat ay nakalign and everything should will everything will match uh, everything will be consistent consistent with everything else so that's valuing dito naman sa organization this is concerned with bringing together different values and building a value system medyo mataas ng level ito hindi pa pwede ito sa mga maliliit na bata we cannot apply this to very very young learners maswerte na tayo makaabot tayo ng valuing with very young learners because organization involves bringing together different values and ultimately building a value system in our life we acquire we learn different values value this value that value one value two so what do we do with them we organize them to create our own value system every person has his own value system this value system will become our principles in life they will become our philosophies in life which in turn will govern our action as individuals so medyo mataas ng level ito hindi pwede ito as i have already said we cannot apply this to very young learners so halimbawa values of responsibility and rights dapat matutunan ng tao ng mga learners na in our society we have certain rights may mga karapatan however we have also to remember that we also have responsibilities so how do we organize that how do we balance that rights versus responsibilities each person has his own value system through which he can balance internally the hindi naman conflict no the, the, the difference between rights and responsibilities kasi pareho nating pareho nating dapat i-balance yan eh. mayroon tayong rights mayroon din tayong responsibilities so the way we balance this internally meaning within ourselves becomes our value system idadagdag pa yung ibang mga values values of nationalism values of patriotism values of civic mindedness we organize all of them it becomes our value system children very young learners do not have this yet yung value system they are on their way to developing their own value system they are still picking up different forms of values different kinds of values it will require a little bit of maturity on their part to have their own value system and that is the reason why most of the time it is the parents or the teachers who need to teach uh, to teach what is wrong and what is right to children kaya nga itong 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 affective 
domain of learning is very important because this will uh, this will lead to the learner's character in the end kung anong mga pag-uugali kung anong mga values ang isaksak sa kanyang utak ng kanyang environment whether it's the home the school the church the community and people whether it's parents teachers this will become his character so, so to make his learning uh, learning holistic right knowledge from the cognitive domain should be balanced with the right values in the affective domain and that is why when we write our objectives when we make lesson plans when we write course outlines when we write syllabi uh, as, as much as possible there should there should be objectives for the cognitive that's for the mind objectives for the affective that's for the heart and psychomotor objectives that's for the body so the development the learning of the child is holistic na 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 nasa sakop niya ang lahat ng areas ng kanyang personality uh, and as already mentioned uh, learning a value does not ha happen in an instant it it happens gradually so kaya nga nag-uumpisa doon sa receiving lang muna uh, noticing or paying attention to instances of patriotism instances of loving the environment or loving trees loving rivers loving the family loving the community loving one school being honest being brave being the lahat ng mga values kailangan munang manotis nila and then they should respond they should show interest towards it and then they will value meaning they will consider it important they they, they consider it um um a requirement even for for a meaningful life yeah. and then dahil marami naman tayong na values na natutuhan in our life we organize them afterwards to create or to build our own value system so it becomes a part of our personality so uh, marami dito mga examples uh, adhere alter arrange combine compare complete defend explain for uh, blah 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 uh, you can you can see all these words on, on, on the slide and in your modules. Examples of objectives uh, uh, under the organization level. Organize the need for balance between freedom and response. This is what I was saying just a while ago. Recognize the need for balance between freedom and responsible behavior. Accept responsibility for one's behavior. Mayroong nabasag na flower vase sa classroom. Sino ang nakabasag nito? Ma'am, ako. Maamin yung bata. He, he is able to uh, accept responsibility for his behavior. Siya ang nakabasag. Meaning he has already organized his, his, his values. No? Um, he has already learned na mayroon siyang karapatang pumasok sa classroom na yon. But he has also learned that he has, he has the responsibility to be careful with the things inside it. See? Na-balance niya, na-organize na kasi. So the list of the behavioral terms uh, we can use in this, in this um, level, organization, are also seen here, no? I mean, the list is seen here. The words are listed here. Let's proceed to the highest level of affective learning, which is characterization. So, pagkatapos makita, receiving, pagkatapos magpakita ng um, interest towards that value, responding, uh, after showing or demonstrating that he considers it important, very valuable, valuing, after putting all together these different values that he has learned all through, the years, which is organization, we now develop a lifestyle from a value system. We develop a lifestyle from our value system. We become, we, we become known to other people because of our value system. Because our value system becomes our lifestyle and this becomes us. <laughs> This is, this is how we present the, ourselves to the world. See? 
Tayo yan, yung ating value system, yung ating lifestyle. That's us. That is our character as a person. So, nakikilala tayo ng dahil dyan sa ating value system. Because of our personality, because of our lifestyle, because of, of the things we consider important, because of what we do. Oh, nalibawa, oh. when we think of charity, when we, when we think of kindness, when we think of uh, serving or loving our fellow men, sino usual ang una natin naisip? Uh, Di ba si Mother Teresa? Yun. Yun ang kanyang value system. Yun ang kanyang lifestyle. That was her character. And the entire world knows her because of that value system. Oh, haba siya. Uh, characterization has a value system that controls their behavior. See, sabi ko. Our value system controls our behavior. It, our value system actually makes us who we are. Examples show self-reliance when working independently. Halimbawa sa school. Ang purpose ng teacher is to is for the is for the learners to show a particular uh, behavior, or attitude, or value, like self-reliance. Ay, madali lang yung magbibigay lang siya ng task. Anybody who can show self-reliance meets the objective, see, or cooperate in group activities, or display teamwork. Use an objective approach in problem solving and so on and so forth. All of these are manifestations of a person's character. All of these are manifestations of a particular set of behavior or values which have become part of the person's character. So, our keywords, our behavioral terms include the following. Act, discriminate, display, influence, discriminate between good and bad behavior. Hmm. Modify, perform, propose, qualify, question. All of these uh, behavioral terms are enumerated here. Yeah. These are the key words. These are the behavioral terms we can use um, for this level of affective learning, which is characterization. So, yan yan, yang lima yan, under affective, no? Receiving, responding, valuing, organization, and characterization. So, going back to the cognitive level, oh, going back to the cognitive level, meron tayong, yung, oh, remembering, Meron din tayong understanding, then applying, then analyzing, evaluating, creating. You will notice that the levels in the affective domain comes in the form of a hierarchy. Receiving being at the simplest or easiest, lowest level, and characterization is the highest, the most difficult to achieve level. Just like in the cognitive level, which also comes in the form of a hierarchy. Remembering being the lowest and creating being the highest. So just like the cognitive and affective domains, the third one, psychomotor domain, also comes in the form of a hierarchy. Yeah. And it has seven subcategories or level. This is the domain which refers to or on no, a domain that refers to uh, the use of psychomotor um, skills. Psychomotor pertaining to body movements, body coordination, such as the following. Perception, set, Guided response, mechanism, complex, overt response, adaptation, and origination. 
So this is a hierarchy, perception being the lowest. Lowest, kasi siyang pinakamadali on the part of the learner to do. Perception, the next higher step or level is set. Then guided, papunta lahat doon sa origination. Origination is the highest level in the psychomotor domain. Bakit siya consider, considered as the highest? Kasi siya ang pinakamahirap gawin on the part of the learner. Siya ang pinakamahirap matutuhan. It is the uh, most difficult level to learn. It is the most complex in the hierarchy. No. Okay. So let's talk about this. So, as in the case of cognitive domain and affective domain, no, when learning something, we do not uh, learn the most complex knowledge first. We start with the simple ones. Kaya nga, remembering lang muna. Then understanding, then we proceed to the next higher level hanggang makarating tayo sa creating. The same thing applies with the affective domain. Sabi ko nga kanina, nobody becomes honest in an hour. And, uh, and uh, understand the concept of honesty fully within an hour. So it comes gradually. I mean, the understanding and the, the, the um, uh, possession, the, the, what do you call this? Uh, having this particular value, be, becoming honest, comes or happens gradually, meaning it happens slowly. Ganon din sa psychomotor domain. Hindi instant, hindi sa isang kasapatay, napakagaling mo nang gumalaw, napakagaling mo kagad mag-baseball o basketball, sumayaw, things like those. You can, you can, halimbawa sa origination, gagawa ka agad ka, ng, ng sarili mong steps. Then you will choreograph uh, a group of dancers. Hindi naman ganun. Uh, it comes gradually. And speaking of gradually, ang nauna sa proseso ay perception. When we perceive something, uh, ah, teka, ito muna. The psychomotor domain includes Ito, physical movement, coordination and the use of the motor skill areas. So, the, sabi nga natin, it's about physical or bodily movement, coordination. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng motor, mo, psycho, psycho mind motor. So, coordination between the brain and the body. Kung anong sinasabi ng utak na susunod ng katawan. Development of these skills requires practice. So, you see, nobody becomes a star basketball player uh, in an instant. Kailangan maraming araw ng practice. And it's measured in terms of speed, precision, distance, procedures, or techniques in execution. Ito ang mga pang, pang assess, pang measure ng psychomotor learning. <clears throat> okay. Sana hindi mawala ng ating boses bago tayo matapos. So let's start here. Perception the use of the sense organs to guide motor activities. So, here, we make use of our sense organ, sense organs, kasi lima sila. Whatever we, whatever we perceive, we use that to guide our movement. No? That's the first level. We use our perception, we use our sense organs, and what we, whatever we perceive, whatever, whatever our sense organs perceive, become our guide for our movement. Example, kung may sasalo ka ng bola, halimbawa, you are playing basketball, or you are playing baseball, halimbawa sa baseball, pinalo ng batter, layo, ikaw ay fielder, so, you should be able, the child should be able to use his uh, sense of seeing in order to see the ball and estimate the spot on which it will fall. 
so that he can catch the ball. <laughs> Kung hindi marunong mag-estimate, mali yung tingin sa bola, akala ay malayo pa, malapit na pala, something wrong is with his eyes, hindi niya masasalo. So you see, perception. Uh, kaya nga, sa basketball, ang inuuna ay passing the ball, catching the ball. Yeah, hindi na pang NBA ka agad ang training, no? Okay. Example, other examples, detects non-verbal communication cues. Uh, alimbawa sa basketball ulit, the players communicate with each other through non-verbal communication cues, mga signals. Dapat nakikita muna nila so that they can coordinate with other players in the team. Estimate where a ball will land after it is... Uh, this is what I was saying just a while ago. Uh, proper use of the senses will enable the learner to estimate where a ball would fall. So usually, ang unang exercises dyan ay uh, catch, and, uh, catch and throw. Diba? Okay. So that's perception. So meron na mga keyboard. Keyboards. Key words. Choose, describe, detect, differentiate, distinguish, identify, isolate, relate, select. So depending again, uh, depending again, on your lesson, on your activities, it's up to you now to choose the correct or appropriate behavioral term for your objectives. Basta, it's all about perception, nandun yan. Usually, dyan nag-uumpisa eh. Hindi pwedeng adaptation ka agad. Hindi pa sila marunong tumingin ng bola, nandun ka na sa, oh, sige class, tapos na tayo ng baseball, basketball naman. What you learn in baseball, you can also uh, use in basketball. Halimbawa, in catching ball. Kasi the same skills yun eh. Oh, sasalo ng bola. Huwag muna ka agad. Doon, doon muna tayo sa perception. Baka balibangon ni mot bola, mayroon palang depekto sa mata, tama sa oda. Oh, nalipat sa likod yung kanyang mukha. May problema ka pa ngayon sa kanyang parents. So doon muna tayo sa, sa perception. Okay. So again, these are um, the... Uh, Keywords or behavioral terms you can use to write objectives under. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. Under the uh, psychomotor domain, specifically under perception. Well, then we have set refers to the readiness to take particular type of action. Uh, yung nakapaglaro na ng baseball, basketball, you will easily understand this. Pinala yung bola ng batter. Flying, malayo. So nakita natin yung bola. We estimate where it would fall. Malayo eh. What do we do? Titingnan lang yung bola. Uy, bola oh. Layo oh. Lakas pumalo. Oh, nandun na sa ground, hindi ko na sa loob. Kasi hindi siya gumalaw. <laughs> so, <laughs> after seeing the ball, meaning after perception, after using the senses to guide action, the next level would be to uh, move, to act on what we see, to act on what we perceive through our senses. So, magandang tumakbo, magandang sumalo, uh, basta ihanda yung kanyang tamang reaksyon. Yeah. Readiness to take particular type of action. Ng magandang lumundag, things like those. We will not just watch. So, mayroong mga lessons na ganyan. Mayroong mga activities na ganyan. Meron din sana dapat tayong mga objectives para sa ganyang mga lessons. So that our objectives, our learning activities, our learning approaches or strategies or techniques, and our learning assessment will all be aligned. Magmamats ulit sila. They will be consistent with one another from beginning to end. Our teaching becomes effective. Our learners will 
we learn from us. So that session now becomes, yung pagklase natin sa kanila becomes productive and meaningful dahil po natuto sila in an effective way. Kasi tama yung paggawa ng objectives. Nag-uumpisa po lahat sa objectives eh. Everything will start there. The objectives will determine everything that will happen inside the classroom. From good morning class to goodbye class. Okay. So ito ulit, mga examples. Mental, physical, and emotional sets. Handa ang katawan, handa ang isip, handa ang emotion to respond. Remember, we're talking about readiness here, ha? Hindi pa ito yung actual action, paghanda pa lang. So we see a ball flying. We have already estimated where it would fall. What we do? What do we do? We get ready. Our body gets ready. We prepare our body. We prepare our mind. We prepare our emotion. See? Set yan. Set. So again, meron na ulit na mga keywords. Begin, display, explain, move, proceed, react, show, state, volunteer. Okay, so depende again on the lesson. Depending on the lesson again, pala ka nang mamili dyan kung anong gagamitin mong objective. Begin to run. Yeah. Display readiness to jump. Yeah. Explain why it's important to... Things like that. No? Um, that's under... That's under set. Readiness to act. Readiness pa lang to act ha? Hindi pa ito yung actual action. The actual action starts here. In the guided response, concerned with the early stages in learning complex skill, imitation and trial and error are imitation and trial and error. Okay, kano pa lang? Imitation at saka trial and error. Yeah, imitation and trial and error are some of the ways of doing this. Guided response. Guided. Bakit guided? Gagaid mo na ng teacher. Paano paano pagsalo ng bola? How do you hold your glove properly? How do you uh, hold the 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 bow and arrow properly in archery? How to uh, how to hold the javelin in the javelin throw? Things like those. Tinuturo yan lahat ng teacher mo na. Ginagaid. Pagsot ng gloves. Baka mali ang pagsuot ng gloves sa boxing eh. Tinamaan, tulog ka agad. Gumanti ng suntok, hindi tumama. Bakit? Mali ang pagsuot ng glove. Yung left glove napunta sa right hand. Yung right glove napunta sa left hand. Eh di balik pag suntok niya. See? Tumama sa sarili. <laughs> tulog siya, sarili niyang suntok. <laughs> Naging gumig tuloy ako nilang boxing. Ah. Okay, okay. Let's, let's proceed. Adequacy of performance is achieved by practicing. Dito nag-uumpisa na yung pag-practice. Uh, practicing the correct or appropriate, appropriate movement starts here. Now, examples. Following instructions to build the model. Responds, uh, hand signal, responds to the hand signals of the instructor while learning to operate a forklift. Ah, hindi, hindi to laro, kundi forklift. Pero ganun din, you need guidance from the instructor, you need guidance from the teacher. And this is about movement, this is about coordination. So, one parents yan, psychomotor, guided response. Uh, yung examples ko ay sa games, eh, kasi psychomotor is usually associated with games, ang mga physical education, things like that. Pagsayaw, yeah. doon maraming movement. Eh. Copy, trace, follow, react, reproduce, respond. Yeah. At the end of the 60-minute period, the student should be able to reproduce the sound, ste the sound steps, the dance steps demonstrated by the
teacher. And they demonstrate ng teacher yung dance steps, i-reproduce nila, i-perform nila by themselves. Pag nagawa nila, successful sila sa objective na yun. Okay, so perception, use of senses, set, readiness. Guided response, this is the start of learning the uh, the task, learning the movement, learning the performance. So, uh, mechanism, the response has become habitual. So, medyo mataas na yung level ng kanyang skill. Dito, response has become habitual. Performance skills are with ease and confidence. So, wala na yung pachamba-chamba. Wala na yung trial and error. At this point, the learner has gone past the stage of trial and error. The responses have become habitual, maybe even second to nature to him. He can now perform the skills, he can now perform the task with ease. Madali na lang para sa kanya kasi nga nakasanayan na niya. And with confidence. May tiwala na sa sarili. Sa sarili. He is now confident of his uh, ability to perform the task because he knows that he has been doing this. He knows that he has been practicing this for enough number of times. At saka alam niyang magaling na siya to a certain extent. No? That's mechanism. So anong ginagawa dito? This is the intermediate stage in learning a complex skill. Nasa intermediate na. Meaning, lampas na siya sa stage ng pagiging beginner. Learned responses have become habitual. Pag habitual, parang nakasanaya na. Habitual. Nasanay na siya sa ganon. And the movements can be, for, can be performed with some confidence and proficiency. Halimbawa, use a personal computer. Yeah. Nasa mechanism na siya. Wala na yung trial and error. Wala na yung magtatapay. Nasaan ba yung A? Uh, Nasaan ba yung A? A? Ah, ito. Tuldok. Nasaan ba yung X? X. Nasaan ba yung A? Nasaan ba yung A? Ah, ito pala. Tuldok. Tampas na siya doon. Mabilis na siya mag-type. He can now use the personal computer with confidence and proficiency. Ah. Repair a leaking faucet. Drive a car. So kapag ang mga estudyante natin is already in this level, we should not write objectives that are still in the perception or set level. Diba? At the end, the, at the end of the 60-minute period, the student should be able to see the computer. Ano yun? Kukomputer na nga, I see the computer pa rin Kasi ka meron mga objectives na gano'n, lalo. No, no teacher in his right mind do, no teacher in his right mind would write such an objective. I'm just using a very exaggerated example here to tell us straight the importance of writing objectives that are uh, appropriate for the level of the learners. How do we know which level they are? Ay, dati na natin mga pupils yan eh. Dati na natin mga sadyante yan eh. Or, oh, kung hindi man dati sadya, if they are not our former students, then we can give them diagnostic test. Magpalaro ka to determine their extent, to, to determine their level of skill. Makikita mo kung nasa na sila. Kung magagaling ng sumalo, huwag kang babalik doon sa perception. Doon ka agad sa mechanism. Examples of these are assemble, calibrate, construct, dismantle, display, fasten, fix, grind. See, they are already, uh, they are verbs, they are behavioral terms that require uh, a certain amount of skill to perform. Kasi nasa mechanism level na sila. So again, the most important thing to remember here is consistency. Among all the elements of the lesson plan, among all the elements of the lesson from beginning, from objectives to end, meaning assessment, or even assignment. The assignment should be a reinforcement of what has been learned. So, dapat yung lahat ay naka-aligned. So, let us proceed. No? So, mechanism, 
uh, the, the action, the skill, the performance has become habitual. Yung, wala na yung mga patrial, trial and error. Wala na yung pachamba-chamba. The, the, the learner has now gained confidence and proficiency in performing the task. So let us proceed. Yung level na yun, kaya pa bang i-advance? I- Is there a higher level? Eh, siyempre, yun yung susunod na level. Complex overt response. Skillful performance and with complex movement patterns. So the next level is an extension, an enhancement of mechanism. Yeah. Complex overt response. Kung mabilis sumakbo, lalo pang bibilis. Kung magaling sumalo, lalo pang gagaling sumalo. If he is a fast swimmer, then he will become a faster swimmer. And that is the reason why the, uh, the words, the, what I call this, the behavioral terms used are, are the same. Hmm? You look at this. Assemble, build, calibrate, magkapareho. However, we should indicate that the performance is quicker, better, more accurate. The skillful, uh, describe one natin sila, complex overt response. The skillful performance of motor acts. Motor acts. Hindi ka dili mag-motor, hindi ka magsakay sa kotse, hindi ka magsakay sa motorsiklo. Ibig sabihin dito, body movements nga. Acts of the body, motor acts. Acts that require bodily coordination, body, bodily movement, motor acts. That involve complex movement patterns. Proficiency is indicated by a quick, accurate, and highly coordinated performance requiring a minimum, mu, ma, minimum, sorry, requiring a minimum of energy. Yeah. maneuvers a car into a tight parallel parking lot. Yeah. Doon sa mechanism, pwedeng magaling mag-drive. But here in the complex overt response, Pina level up yung kanyang, yung kanyang skill. He can maneuver uh, his car into a tight parallel parking spot. Exacto lang halo sa kanyang kotse na ipark niya ng maayos. So you see? So mas magaling yun than simple driving. So the skill is brought <coughs> excuse me brought up wow improve one step higher. Okay. You will notice that in the keywords, the um, behavioral terms are the same. Assemble, build, calibrate, and so on and so forth. Um, however, we should indicate that the performance is quicker, better, more accurate, etc. Pareho ng behavioral terms, however, we should indicate that it is quicker, better, more accurate. So kung fast, faster. Yeah. Kung high, higher. Jump higher. Kung sa mechanism ay jump high, sa complex overt response, jump higher. So you see, in-improve lang yung kanyang skill. But the same um, behavioral term, the same verb. Let's proceed to adaptation. The, at this particular level, the skill is already well developed. That the ability to modify is very easy. Halimbawa, the skill of catching. Ah, ito na naman yung ibon. The skill. <laughs> Dami nating sound effects. Mamaya yan, papasok na naman yung list. <laughs> Toko naman mamaya. Okay. <laughs> Skill is well developed here. Talagang magaling na. No? Kung magaling sa complex, mas lalo pa ditong naging magaling and the ability to modify is very easy. Halimbawa, catching a ball. The learner does not need to learn how to catch every time he learns a new sport. 
yung pagsalo ng bola sa baseball, the ability to catch ball, a ball in baseball, can be transferred, can be adapted to basketball. So pag magaling na siyang sumalo ng bola sa baseball, i-adapt na lang niya yung skill na yon sa basketball. It's very easy to modify because the skill of catching has already been well developed in him. So iba namang skills ang kakailanganin dito, iba na namang skills ang kanyang demonstrate, iba naman ang kanyang ang gagamitin mga behavioral objectives natin. Adaptation, skills that in enable the individual to modify movement patterns to fit special requirements. Parang kung lang yan, uh, one movement, one skill you learned in one thing can be applied to another. Halimbawa, pag sakay ng bisikleta, a uh, proficient bicycle rider uh, can easily learn how to ride a motorcycle because the required skill of balancing is already there. Halimbawa, gustong, dalawa ang gustong matuto ng motor. Si Juan at si Pedro. Si Juan, dati nang marunong magbisikleta. He is already adept at balancing. Nababalance yung bisikleta eh. Si Pedro, hindi pa. Gusto nila, pareho silang matutong magmotor. Sino sa palagay natin ng mas mauna? Siyempre si Juan. Kasi marunong siya mag-drive. Ma, mag-drive? Yeah, marunong mag-drive ng bisikleta. Marunong na siyang mag-balance. Si Pedro, mag-umpisa pa lang sa balancing. Si, si Juan, madaling maka-adapt. Madali siyang maka-adjust to a new task because he has mastered a particular skill that is also required in this new task. That's adaptation. Yeah. Respond effectively to unexpected experience, modify instruction to meet the needs of the learners. These are all uh, examples of objectives under adaptation. So the common thread here, the common denominator here is adjustment, adaptation. Using or applying something that is learned from one task and transferring it to a similar but entirely different task. Magkaiba yung pagbibisikleta, magkaiba yung pagmumotor. But they re- there are certain skills that are required in both. Yun yung pagbalance. So yung marunong na magbalance, may advantage siya pagdating sa learning how to ride a motorcycle. That's adaptation. Adapt, alter, change, rearrange, reorganize, revise, and varies. These are the Uh, these are the um, objective, no, 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 not objective, these are the behavioral terms that we can use to write objectives under the adaptation level, which in turn falls under the psychomotor domain. Adapt a particular dance step to another dance. Halimbawa, hmm. nagpo-folk dance. Magkahawig-hawig ang mga kilos niya. Magkahawig-hawig ang mga steps eh. It just uh, differs a little depending on the depending on the uh, choreography. But the steps, the movements are almost similar. So madali nang mag-adapt. Yung mga dati nang marunong mag-folk dance. Ganun din sa modern dance. The sense of rhythm is already there. The sense of timing. The 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 graceful movement is already there. So, madali na siyang matuto ng ibang sayaw. Makakag, makakapag-adapt na sa ibang sayaw. Yun ang level niya yun. So, sa level na ito, these are the words that we can use. And these are the things that we can we can teach. Modifying movements. Hindi tayo babalik dun sa mga perception to, to observe, uh, to, 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 to see uh, uh, where the ball would fall. Malayo na yun. Nung umpisa pa lang yun ang kanyang training eh. Dito eh. Malapit na siya mag-origination eh. Which refers to, uh, yun ang segue natin na, uh, origination. Refers to creating new movement. Origination. 
Hawig sa salitang original. Ayan. So they have the same root word, yung origin. Sa origination, the learner can now create his own movement. He can create new movement patterns to fit a situation. So, halimbawa, in terms of dancing, the learner will not just follow the instructor and do what the instructor is doing. In this particular level, in this particular level, the learner is now able to create his own dance steps. He is now able to choreograph his own dance number. Creativity is evident. Creativity is demonstrated. He can now create his own dance number, dance steps. He can choreograph his own dance, uh, the dance routine. See? Origination. This is the highest level. Kailangan dumaan sa, <clears throat> kailangan dumaan dun sa mga lower levels be, before we can uh, reach this one. So, ano ang ginagawa dito? Creating new movement patterns to fit a particular situation or specific problem. Examples, constructing a new theory. Bah! Ah, okay na, mga construct mo sariling theory. Is there movement here? Ay, maka theory about sports, theory about dance. No? Galaw pa rin. Develops a new and comprehensive training program. See, you develop your own training program for basketball, for golf, for volleyball, for a particular kind of sports, whatever it is, basta siya ay bago. Yun kasi ang mark ng origination, it should be something new. Create a new gymnastic routine. Imagine that, no? Bago kang makarating sa level nito, talagang magaling na. Na-master na yung mga basic movements. So, uh, if our target is in the level of origination, meaning we want our learner, our students, our pupils, to create new movement patterns. The following, object, the, the following behavioral terms can be used to write our objectives, arrange, build, combine, compose, construct, and, and so on and so forth. Halimbawa, at the end of the period, the student should be able to combine previously steps, uh, to combine previously learned steps to create a new dance routine. That's origination. No? So again, hindi yan mabagay sa mga beginners ulit. Dapat ito ay pang medyo advanced learners na. So everything we will do inside the classroom will or should be aligned again with that objective. Lahat ng gagawin sa classroom dapat ay pupunta sa kanya. Towards the students or pupils performing a new dance routine based on previously learned dance steps. Ganyan po ang gumagawa ng mga objectives based on uh, these behavioral terms, based on this taxonomy. Yan po ang gamit ng taxonomy ni uh, Bloom the Benjamin Bloom and his associates. Yep. Uh, so that is the last slide for, for, for this particular topic. No? So, so far, we have already discussed the uh, three domains. Three learning domains. The cognitive domain or the cognitive area. The affective domain. The psychomotor domain. We have learned that its domain is divided into levels or categories. We have also learned that each of these categories in every domain contains a set of behavioral terms. These are words, these are verbs that we can use in writing our objectives. Let us make use of these behavioral terms in writing our objectives. They will help us write correct instructional objectives. And from correct 
correctly written or instructional objectives we can we can plan we can uh, we can uh, design our teaching our instruction based on that objective we will align everything with or to that objective beginning with our approach to the lesson with our strategy our techniques our topic our lessons our activities our exercises our learning experiences our assessment and even our assignment so that everything will be consistent with everything else everything will match everything else everything will be congruent with everything else lahat ay connected lahat magkakaugnay ugnay in the end this will result to productive effective and meaningful learning because everything is connected ganyan po ang gamit ng mga uh, behavioral terms na ito given to us by Benjamin Bloom and his associates from cognitive to from cognitive to affective to psychomotor domains or areas of learning palaging tinatanong po yan sa exam three areas of learning ang madali na yan sa inyo cognitive, affective, psychomotor uh, tinatanong din itong mga behavioral terms yung mga levels, levels dyan uh, please familiarize yourselves with these different levels in its learning domain so ang pinaka practice ninyo dito write examples of uh, instructional objectives that fall under the different domains and under the different levels yeah so you can use our module as your guide no you can use our module as your guide so we will stop there for the meantime uh, dyan po nagtatapos ang ating usapan <laughs> regarding Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy um, I hope you have you have learned something from our from our discussion um, see you on the next uh, video oh, meron pa. <laughs> uh, see you in our next online class uh, wait for the next module to be uploaded <laughs> Sensya na kayo at maraming modules sa Ganitong sitwasyon natin eh. Hindi ba yata nagreklamo na ang dami daw modules? Sensya na kayo, ganito talaga. Hindi ko na nga kayo tinatambakan ng mga exercises sa mga, at saka mga activities eh. I just, I just discuss with you the modules I upload into our, into our group chat. Huwag kayo magagalit. Uh, ganitong sitwasyon natin eh because of COVID. So again, uh, see, you, see you on our next online class. Uh, goodbye to everybody. Goodbye for now. Um, ingat tayo lahat. Everybody stay safe. And God bless everyone.